I've not seen such bravery. Have you ever wanted to be a fish? I know, I know, you probably get asked that all the time, but this time I want you to really think about it. The correct answer to that thought is no, you don't want to be a fish, because fish swim in their own poop, and every other fish's poop, and that's gross. But that didn't stop Humongous Entertainment from creating Freddy Fish, a series of adventure games all about swimming in poop. I'm really excited to be looking at another junior adventure from Humongous Entertainment. So excited, in fact, that I asked my friend Peanut Butter Gamer to collab on this video with me, and he said yes. So get ready to solve the case of the missing kelp seeds, and I'll try to not talk about fish poop anymore. The first Freddy Fish game was released on February 7th, 1994. At the time, two of the four big Junior Adventure series had yet to be created. This is also the first Humongous Entertainment game to use hand-drawn animation, which would set the standard for all of the following Junior Adventures. The series follows the underwater antics of Freddy and her best friend Luther as they solve mysteries. Each game is a different case designed to make you feel like the Sherlock of the sea. Our story starts, as many epic adventures do, with tragedy. What's wrong, Grandma Grouper? Someone took my treasure chest. Grandma, your treasure chest that holds all the kelp seeds? Yes, Freddy. Look at the garden. It's dying. This story just got progressively less interesting as it went along. Treasure chest? Awesome. Treasure chest full of kelp seeds? Meh. Hey, let's stare at a field of dirt? Uh, no. Until we find my treasure chest, we have no food. I'll find your treasure chest, Grandma Grouper. Oh, thank you, Freddy. Here's my last peanut butter and jellyfish sandwich for your journey. Until we find my treasure chest, we have no food. Here, take some of the food that I have. Granny Groper is not exactly establishing herself as a trustworthy character. I'm sorry, Granny Groper. Granny Groper. Granny Groper. Granny Groper. Granny Groper. God damn. So if there's obviously other foods like sandwiches, what do we need the kelp for? I mean, do you want to eat this or this? Freddy enlists the help of her friend slash sidekick, Luther. Uh, just a little info on Luther here. He's stupid, annoying, and terrible. Hi, Luther. What are you doing? I'm trying to swim a loopy loop. Ow! Luther's incompetence as a fish ends up being imperative to the kelp treasure trail, though, as they find their first clue conveniently located atop a rock that Luther was busy repeatedly smashing his face into. It says, to find Grandma Grouper's treasure chest, go near the beach. I'm gonna be rich when I find that treasure. Well, that was convenient. Following their only lead, Freddy and Luther set out on their adventure, but right behind them are a pair of sharks who are hunting for the same treasure. Because, you know, sharks just really love eating kelp. It's a well-known fact. We need to head towards the beach, where we'll presumably find another clue. The ocean floor is dotted with signs to help the fish get around. Some are really helpful, like this crown sign, which probably leads to a castle, and this creepy one with Grandma Grouper's face on it. How'd you like one of those in your front yard, huh? Just a sign of your face to let people know you live there. That wouldn't be weird or anything. Most of them, though, are incredibly unhelpful. I'm pretty much just wandering around. This is Mrs. Halibut, and she's got a real big problem. Her guppy, Gabby, is gripped in danger. Pinned beneath a rock, he needs us to free him. Because apparently he's not man enough to go a full 127 hours. So add that to our chore list. At least we got this purple shell, though. I mean, it was put on this pedestal of rocks and God himself is shining down upon it, so I'd assume it's at least moderately important. We'll just leave Gabby there for now. I'm sure he'll be fine to wait a bit longer. All right! We found a bottle! Luther's voice is just the most scratchy and annoying thing I've ever heard. All right! The note says, go to the junkyard. Hey, what are those things you keep picking up? Oh, you mean my purple sea urchins? Yeah, they're pretty sweet. You keep finding them on the ground. They can't be that sweet. What do they do? I don't know, but Freddy gets really excited every time I find one. We found another purple sea urchin. Well, then keep picking them up, I guess. We also find a board over here, which we can probably use to free Gabby, who is surely beginning to starve by now and is probably considering eating his own fin off. But he can wait a bit longer. I want to keep moving forward. Uh, gee, boss, the kelp treasure ain't here. Well, if you can't find that treasure chest, 
you're gonna have to answer to the squid father. Why would a group of sharks and a squid want a bunch of kelp seeds? If the fish can't eat and then all die, then what are the sharks gonna eat? This just doesn't seem like a very advantageous plan. Why does anyone want anything, man? Why did the entire fish population let an elderly woman care for their whole supply of kelp seeds? Life doesn't make sense. People don't make sense. Fish don't make sense. And koalas can't be trusted. Fiddler Crab, what's wrong? I would gladly give you my fishing pole if you could please get me out of this cage. This game is just nailing the French accent here. I mean, I wish I had this kind of skill. Oh me, oh my, oh me, oh my. How did I get in this cage? I must get out of this cage. Please help me get out, and I'll give you my fishing pole. It brings a tear to my eye. Are you kidding me? The crab has a fishing pole? A fishing pole? He's a fish murderer and we're gonna get him out of his cage? Sorry, man, I just can't let a voice like that be caged up. We gotta save him. The key is on the next screen, just kind of sitting there. Nobody wanted to pick it up. This awesome looking key. There's also a pearl that it looks like we should pick up, but it's behind this clearly impenetrable net. Hi, Ray. <laughs> You can't get through the shrimp net unless you got the super duper duka booka poly gizmo. So we need to get that thing, but to get it, Ray wants us to find him a clock. Why a clock? Well, do I need to break out my why anything theory again? No, no, that's all right. I think we get it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, we might as well go back and- Save Gabby? You know, I've actually been worrying about him a little. It's been a while. Right, right. Wait, what? No, no, no. I mean, we should go let the fish-killing musical French crab free. He sings, he murders, he's got a mustache. What's not to love? Thanks for unlocking the cage. The crab unloads his murder weapon, and we continue on our way, stopping by some old whale bones. There we see some magical sword-fighting bones, but instead we pick up the boring one that does absolutely nothing. All right, all right, I guess we should go save Gabby now. But I mean, hey, a lot of stuff can happen in the time it took for us to get back here. Is he still even stuck? I'm still stuck. Ugh, fine. Luther, come help! There, we saved your kid's life. Now, what do we get out of it? Please take this purple sea urchin for saving my Gabby. A purple sea urchin? Awesome. You mean those things we've been finding around on the ground? Yeah, but just look how many we have now. Well, kid, enjoy living the rest of your life knowing that your mom was only willing to give up a purple spiky lump that she probably found on the side of the road in exchange for your life. Yeah, she seems to love you very much. This game, even by humongous entertainment standards, seems exceedingly easy. It feels like no matter where we go, we're going in the right direction. I mean, here we are at this crab in a glowing shell. He can't sleep because of the light, and I just Crabby, happen Crabby, to have the shell from before. I mean, it's convenient, yeah, but it's not exactly a challenge. And, I mean, I'd assume the kids would think so, too. Welcome to my kingdom, with all my shells and pearls. But what really makes it very grand are all the boys and girls. Uh, we have a 389 here on King Crab. His name King Crab. Yeah, I just sorted the file in the report that he's actually a really trustworthy guy, I think. Don't bother checking him out. out. Don't check him out. Uh, just leave him alone. Definitely not a pedophile. Okay, so I'm gonna log out of my police radio now. Bye-bye. <laughs> Over. Yeah, okay, let's get out of here and go to the junkyard already. We use the whale bone to distract the junkyard dog, fish, oh. ha, and we secure another bottle. The clue says, go to the king's castle. The kelp treasure must be really close now, Luther. <laughs> Not the squid water. Oh, clam up, spongehead. You lost the treasure, so now you got to see the squid father. Wow. Sharks are really boring. We go back to see the king, and guess what? There's a bottle. Was that there before? Of course not. Why would it be? This game is a dirty liar. King Crab, may I please have that bottle? I would gladly give you this beautiful bottle if you would give me a beautiful pearl. 
A pearl? Are you kidding me? We're trying to save the entire population of fish from starving to death, something you'd think, I don't know, a king would want to do. And instead of helping us out, the king is like, hey, if you want this piece of trash, you're gonna have to bring me a freaking pearl. This king is a D-bag. First, we gotta go back to the junkyard to get a clock. We could have done it before, but I kind of forgot because I guess getting a clock for a manta ray is kind of an obscure thing to remember to do. Thanks for the clock. You're welcome, Ray. Now you get the super duper duka booga poly gizmo. I don't see how this thing is gonna get us through the net. Oh, that's how. To get the pearl, we have to play a game of the classic cup and balls, only instead of using cups, Humongous Entertainment decided it would be better to use living nightmares. Watch the pearl closely. Creepy. Clams with teeth are creepy. Ooh! What a lovely pearl, Freddy and Lou! Ooh! There. Now you may have my beautiful Ooh. bottle. Thank you, King Crab. The note says the treasure is hidden in the sunken ship. Kelp treasure, right, right. Sorry, I kind of keep forgetting our main goal here. I do hope you'll find Grandma Grooper's treasure. I put all my clues in bottles so I can find my way back to the treasure. This guy has my dream job. Just sort of sitting around angrily mumbling at people until they do my every bidding. <laughs> also, he kind of sounds like you. Just a sort of monotone grumble. What? I don't sound like that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the sunken ship. Don't remember seeing it before? Well, no, you don't. You'd think a sunken ship would be a great place to start looking for treasure, but it's really only worthwhile once a bottle has told us to go there. Hey, Freddy, what do you think is behind that window? Look, Luther, Grandma Grouper's cup treasure is in there. Hey, look, it's a super valuable treasure chest. But let's keep it a secret, okay? Don't want anybody to hear or see it. That would, that would be bad. The window's closed and we need to find a crank to open it. Why does the window open from the outside? Why don't we just take this sword or maybe even the shell we have here and just break the window? Because we don't. We're fish and we don't have that kind of logical reasoning. Instead, we just go and explore the ship further. Arg! There's just one word that says it all. Arg! Arg when I'm happy. Arg when I'm sad. Arg when I'm good or bad. All right, wrap it up, Captain Jack. We've got stuff to do. He needs a new musical instrument, and the guy outside lost his crutch. Find the crutch, swap, swap, boom. Grandma Grouper's cow treasure! Yeah! Ah! <gasps> this game is just making me hate fish more than I already do. The sharks didn't even use the window we opened. They're just like, nah, we'll just swim through the front door like normal sea creatures exploring a sunken ship trying to obtain a kelp treasure. Okay, you two, hand over the treasure. No, Grandma Grouper's kelp seeds are for everyone to share. But we gotta take the treasure to the squid father so we can grow some kelp. If we share the seeds, we can all grow kelp. Share the kelp seeds? Gee, boys. Wait, I got an idea. We can share the kelp seeds. Really? Really? That's how we end this story? Everybody's sharing? So the game is teaching us that it's totally fine to just steal from people and then to just agree to take half when the rightful owners catch you. Like, what kind of logic is that? Well... I mean, it's a kid's game. And another thing I've been meaning to say. You know what I've been seeing a lot of in this game? Kelp. Kelp, 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 kelp. That one probably isn't kelp. Kelp, kelp. It is everywhere. I have a feeling that this kelp shortage is less dramatic than Granny said. Well, maybe it's not the right kind of kelp. Maybe fish don't eat that kind. Oh yeah, you know what? I hadn't really even thought of that. You're probably right, except for this. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure this whole journey was pointless. Freddy, you found the treasure! I saved your treasure, Grandma Cooper. 
Well, okay, Freddy helped a little, but I figured it out. I was very brave. Oh, I'm sure you were, Luther. Now, can you both help me plant the seeds? Oh, good. I'm glad our reward for saving the day is manual labor. I really feel like our entire journey was totally worth it. Yeah! So, disembodied voice of Austin, what did you think about the game? Well, this is a collab, and I didn't want you to think I was, like, phoning it in or anything. So I put a lot of thought into this last part here, and I think I'm gonna have to say it's okay. Wow, that was really insightful. Thanks for all the hard work. As far as humongous entertainment games go, this one is pretty weak in my opinion. Maybe it's the fact that I think the setting is boring, or maybe I think fish are boring or something, but this didn't feel very much like an adventure. Everything felt pretty linear to me. We never really had to go out of our way to do anything. Everything just kind of worked out for the most part. It still had that humongous entertainment charm though. The animations are nice and the music is great. But if I want to revisit that HE magic, I think I'm gonna choose something a little more imaginative. And that's the video. Thanks so much to Peanut Butter Gamer for joining me on this junior adventure. And if you're still in the mood for some humongous entertainment, you should check out his new video on Putt-Putt. In fact, I recommend all of his Putt-Putt videos. They're pretty great. And if you're still hungry for more humongous entertainment, you can check out my Spy Fox or Fatty Bear video. Those are both, uh, humongous entertainment adventures. So choose wisely and, uh, goodbye. <laughs>